Elder Kitty, I'm Carrie, the Vacuum Tube Witch. You've been missing me, I guess. There was a lot of stuff happening here in the lab. I had a bunch of uh, repairs to do, like uh, two synthesizers and a uh, keyboard and a radio. So I was busy and couldn't really do my uh, my filming work. I uh, I kind of got burnt out from this, but now it's time to make another video about something that will shock you. Oh rats! This is gonna shock you. What is this? This is the TGS one uh, shock generator used in a uh, experimental setup with a Skinner box. We're going into some ethically questionable science here. And I will tell you how this thing works, because I reverse engineered it. So, let's take a look at the front panel first. This device uh, was made in 1970s in uh, Poland. It was made for the Institute uh, of uh, Experimental Biology of the Polish Academy of Science in Warsaw. And what it does, uh, it applies uh, voltage across the rods uh, on a Skinner box uh, floor, shocking the animal inside like, like a rat or a uh, pigeon. Let's turn it on. Uh, I will shock no one. <laughs> I will uh, shock uh, no one with this device now, as I demonstrated, but... It has uh, all kinds of different controls and a uh, pretty nice uh, front panel design. This is the main control which is doubled uh, with this uh, BNC socket. <coughs> when, uh, when pressing the button, it will uh, apply the short voltage, uh, the, the shock voltage for uh, a preset, uh, preset duration. Those two controls, uh, they determine uh, how long the shock will be. And uh, the wearing sound, uh, you might be familiar with it because uh, eh, you will see in a short while. <laughs> just uh, just want a short look at it. So here we've got this distribution uh, switch the, the motorized switch this is uh, this is actually where it comes from and uh, when uh, when going into the shock administration mode the motor starts and uh, applies the voltage uh, to 18 uh, rods uh, in uh, the Skinner boxes uh, floor. Oh, we'll see the schematics of uh, this device uh, pretty soon. But now, let's uh, let's see what it does. Uh, this switch uh, changes the operation mode uh, from uh, manual to automatic. In automatic mode, uh, the unit uses a timer for setting the shock duration. And the timer is controlled uh, by two switches uh, that set the time constant uh, of uh, a uh, RC time circuit times point one uh, and uh, times one because uh, 
the shock durations uh, at uh, 0 0.1 uh, would be in the range of uh, milliseconds. The device uh, turns on the motor if it uh, is uh, to be used uh, and uh, doesn't uh, start and stop the motor for the time of uh, time of shock because uh, it would it would just uh, take too long uh, to start and stop but the motor can be put out of action with uh, with this switch this is the face shifter this is marked uh, face shifter if i turn it off the motor is uh, the motor is off. Now it's on. So uh, let's do this uh, without the motor. So those two controls uh, change the time uh, the current is uh, applied uh, to the Skinner box. And when I uh, press the button, it will uh, deliver a uh, short pulse. Just one more time, just to see if it was not a... And of course, stuff has to be happening. So... Mr. Ratman, are you getting shocked today? No, we are not shocking Mr. Ratman. So this was a uh, short pause, but if I change the time constant to twice as long, it's clearly longer. And half of the original value, you almost haven't noticed it. And let's do it times one. So this one should be half a second. If you noticed, uh, first uh, the initial uh, startup time uh, is way longer and uh, the shock duration is uh, longer. Now if I uh, change it to one, the initial the initial uh, hold of uh, time is shorter, but uh, the duration is even longer. And this should be the proper two seconds. But I think that uh, this is way longer. This is decided by the RC time constant. But uh, I discovered one more thing about uh, this switch. If I uh, go off the marked position, it applies the shock current constantly. This switch, uh, together with um, the dial here, sets the intensity of the shock. That is basically the current, times point 0.1 and times 1. And this turns on the motor if, uh, if uh, the device is uh, in the shocking mode uh, or the the shock duration is short. What if I uh, press this button and don't hold it? The timer will uh, automatically 
measure the shock duration. So I can uh, apply a short pulse uh, to the input. As a matter of fact, this is a uh, negative pulse because uh, the input is uh, pulled up uh, to plus 13 volts. And uh, there is one more switch. No, there's uh, there are two more switches. One of them is uh, for the automatic uh, or manual control. The automatic control uses the timer and the time constant we set here for setting the shock duration. But uh, in the manual mode. We decide uh, how long the shock is delivered uh, by uh, pressing or holding the control input um, pulled to ground uh, for a uh, for as, uh, as long as we want. Though the time constant uh, we set here, it still affects uh, the minimum uh, shock duration. If I uh, choose uh, 0.5, press the button and release it uh, immediately. It's very short. Change it to 2.0. It's not two seconds, but uh, it's way longer than uh, when uh, at this position. So uh, the last control is the 100 millisecond pulse. Uh, and uh, this will... This uh, will change the state of the contacts uh, of a relay for 100 uh, millisecond after the shock is delivered. And let's get an uh, overhead view. Maybe let's zoom on in. There are two relays. Uh, one of them uh, controls uh, the shock uh, current. Uh, this uh, this turns on and off uh, the 450 volts uh, AC transformer. The other one is for changing the contacts on the, on the front panel. So, uh, we've got uh, the three pairs of contacts, uh, ABA, C and uh, BAB. And what I reverse engineered uh, was that uh, the C contact is the changeover contact, BAB is normally closed and ABA is normally open. So uh, after after applying the shock, the second relay will briefly turn on and then go off. Turning the shock voltage on. This will come on. But uh, I will release the button now and you will see that uh, this relay will 
will act uh, and uh, almost immediately disengage. Pretty interesting. So how is this shock generator built? Inside we have uh, two transformers. This transformer is the power supply transformer. And uh, this transformer is for the shock voltage. It has uh, two high voltage windings uh, connected in series. And this is turned on by uh, this relay. For a short time period uh, that, uh, that we choose uh, with uh, this pair of controls, like, uh, like I demonstrated, the neon light uh, inside uh, indicates that uh, the shock uh, is active. E14 uh, neon bulb, thank of beauty, die forever. The other indicator lamp uh, uses a uh, typical low voltage uh, light bulb. Hmm. Of course, I have to do it with my left hand. Hmm, this is tighter than ever Granger's laces. But it comes up pretty nicely. And what's on the back panel? The back panel has a two hull 20 pin uh, connector for the for the wires going to the rounds um, in the Skinner boxes floor and it also has uh, two binding posts uh, coupled directly with the with the shock voltage after the after the relay and uh, before before the distribution switch. And inside we've got uh, four circuit boards. One of them is for the regulated uh, DC power supply. It uses two lines uh, of uh, 13 volts. The next two boards, uh, they are the timer boards controlling the relays. This timer board is for the shock duration. Let's zoom on in. So this is the shock duration timer board and this is um, the 100 millisecond uh, timer board uh, after the shock. This one has a uh, preset uh, time constant while uh, this one uh, has an uh, adjustable time constant. That's why you see the wires uh, coming out of uh, the board here. And uh, those two green wires, uh, they go to the automatic or manual uh, control mode switch. Both of those boards um, have their outputs um, wired between the plus 13 volt line and, um, and the collector of uh, an output transistor. And they go to the relays here. And this board uh, 
it's basically a uh, resistive uh, voltage divider and uh, it's a switchable resistor ladder that uh, decides um, the, the shock current so on the bottom side the power supply board uses the two silicon power transistors together with some uh, TO18 uh, silicon transistors and uh, germanium uh, rectifier diodes. It has two sections, they are identical and uh, both of them uh, provide uh, plus 13 volts. One goes to this timer, the other one goes to this timer. I'm not exactly sure why they used uh, separate power supplies for, for both timers. I think that might be because uh, they wanted to <coughs> ensure that uh, one timing doesn't uh, depend on uh, another. So uh, I reverse engineered uh, the timer boards. There's also the resistor ladder board. It also has uh, a few capacitors for setting the time constant. And there are the can electrolytics uh, for the DC filter and let's uh, get down to the distribution switch it has uh, a pair of contacts one of them coming up from uh, the upper side and the other one uh, coming from uh, the bottom side I already showed uh, this kind of uh, distribution switch uh, when I was uh, making a video about my electromechanics project. But uh, here you can see it in its uh, original context. And uh, this uh, distribution switch uh, delivers the shock voltage to a bunch of, uh, of lines uh, going all the way to the 2 hell connector on the back panel and that is connected to the Skinner box. And uh, how it works uh, when, uh, when the rotor is, uh, is rotating it connects uh, the upper contact to a, uh, a group of uh, eight, uh, eight uh, carbon brushes uh, on one side while, uh, while applying the, um, the other contact, uh, the ground, uh, to the group of uh, brushes on uh, the opposite side. So uh, in uh, some uh, in some uh, cases, it will uh, apply uh, one pole to one ribbon and uh, the other pole to, um, to the other ribbon, but uh, it's highly highly improbable. If I turn it, I will make it uh, do so. And uh, the, the incoming voltage is uh, also doubled on the binding posts um, below the 2 hell connector. So, let's get to the papers.
papers, please. So uh, this will be a part of the experimental setup. Upper rat or <laughs> might be a rat or might be a pigeon or might be some other poor animal. This is uh, this is some uh, ethically questionable research about uh, behavior science and uh, the rat is conditioned to press the button or, or a lever and uh, if, uh, if the creature doesn't do it, uh, it may get uh, shocked from, uh, from the floor. It uses uh, something like 18 rods uh, that are connected with the shock generator with that uh, two-hell connector on the back side. And I think that uh, this design of the shock generator, the old one, uh, it has been around uh, for decades, both, uh, both in uh, Europe and America. That's, um, that's uh, what I think that uh, France uh, distribution switch might uh, have been used in one as well. And uh, mine definitely was. So uh, when when applying the the shock voltage, uh, it will probably be registered uh, by a uh, cumulative uh, recorder as a mark on the on the graph. I did a video about um, a uh, cumulative recorder. I got it from the same source, to be honest. <laughs> so I've got the cumulative recorder, I've got the shock generator, but I don't have any other part of uh, the experimental setup, let alone the Skinner box itself. Then the Skinner box is uh, could also have uh, one or two lights um, to prompt uh, the creature that uh, it will be shocked or prompt uh, the creature that uh, it is time to engage uh, the button or the lever, the 1500 megawatt super colliding super button. <laughs> Because what is this? Uh, what else is is the Skinner box uh, than a uh, test chamber? <laughs> so uh, this is uh, the first part I reverse engineered. But here we've got the block diagram of uh, the shot generator. Starting with the power supply, this uh, transformer power supply delivers the 13 volt um, DC for the timer circuit. And uh, the main also, uh, also goes uh, both to the shock transformer, the right one, through the shock con control relay with the current limiter and uh, this goes to the distribution switch the high voltage uh, through a resistor to limit the shocking current of course the current limiting circuit uh, it's not uh, it's not the current source so it's uh, it will depend on the load uh, resistance. Have I mentioned that uh, the shock voltage uh, is uh, alternating rather than uh, direct current? It is, because uh, it uses uh, AC without any rectifier and uh, without any filter. 
so uh, we've got this brand covered. What I also discovered was that uh, it doesn't have the common ground with um, the whole device. Even though uh, one of the sides of the distribution uh, switch uh, is uh, connected with, um, with the motor, it's uh, separate from the ground. It's uh, placed on um, a uh, insulating plate made uh, made of some uh, phenolic. So we got this branch covered. What about this branch? This branch uh, controls the motor, and. Uh, if the phase shifter control is off, uh, then the motor will never go on. But if it's on, it depends uh, whether the shock duration uh, that uh, we see set with the lever switch uh, is uh, times 0.1 or times 1. When it's times 1, the motor is controlled uh, by the same shock control relay that um, controls uh, the transformer, and also, uh, and also uh, the timer, because uh, there's the third contact. Uh, one contact uh, goes to the transformer, the other one contact uh, goes to the motor, and the third contact, uh, it uh, pulls down uh, the input of the second timer for the pulse control. So uh, we've got uh, this branch uh, also covered. How, um, why, uh, why the motor goes on uh, all the time uh, in one setting and uh, doesn't go on uh, all the time uh, only, only when uh, the device is uh, in the shock mode uh, on the other setting. And uh, now the control circuitry, this part, uh, <coughs> like you see here, I uh, maybe I will zoom on in some further. The BNC connector is uh, wired in parallel with the button. So if I uh, pull this line down to the ground, it will uh, create a uh, negative pulse uh, when in the auto mode, uh, when in the timer controlled um, shock duration is, uh, is chosen. Or it will pull down the input of the timer or trigger circuit. And there's, uh, there's the time constant uh, setting with, uh, with the resistor ladder and uh, two switched uh, capacitors. And that goes to the main relay. And there's uh, another timer that uh, controls the other relay whether, it's, uh, whether we want to use it or not. We we can uh, choose with uh, this switch. So uh, this is uh, the timer and uh, trigger circuit reverse engineered. We've got a uh, capacitive coupling on the input that uh, allows a uh, pulse uh, to go through when uh, this is uh, pulled down, but uh, this capacitor will uh, soon recharge. And uh, after, after releasing the, the switch, we don't want to have a uh, 
high voltage uh, spike uh, on the base of the transistor and this diode prevents that. And this would be a one-shot uh, trigger. When, uh, when pulling down the base of the transistor, the collector goes high and uh, the base of the other transistor will go high this uh, this transistor will start conducting and uh, the base of this transistor will go low this is an inverter so um, the collector will go high putting the current through the base of this transistor and uh, switching the relay on and when this uh, base uh, goes high again <coughs> it, the transistor will start conducting this goes low and uh, the other base uh, also goes low so the collector goes high and this will conduct again pulling the collector down and uh, the final transistor, it will um, stop conducting, uh, so uh, the relay will go off. And uh, this is the flyback uh, diode, um, preventing the, the self-induction uh, electromotive force uh, from uh, damaging any part of the circuit. So I don't have any more schematics of the device, but I hope that it was interesting. So this uh, ethically questionable scientific device will become a uh, part of uh, my little vintage electronics museum. And uh, as for the channel, sorry for having you wait uh, so long for any new videos. <laughs> it's been like a, a month uh, since I made the um, electromechanics uh, video. Haven't streamed for a long time as well. It was just uh, too much stuff happening in this place. Like, uh, I had to reorganize the parts and projects and uh, materials storage. I also had to completely overhaul the filming setup. <laughs> it has been quite a job and it might not be perfect yet, but I'm working on it. <laughs> This will deserve a video of its own, because uh, now it's more computerized. And uh, now I'm using a Logitech uh, C930 as uh, an auxiliary camera, because the Razer Keo Pro, it's uh, where I wanted it to be in the first place. It's, uh, it's uh, now the bench cam and I can also uh, use uh, a uh, test gear cam. What I wanted to do for years, something like uh, two years. <laughs> Let's get back to the bench and I will show you. I've got three stages of zoom uh, on the main uh, bench cam. So this is the <laughs> the biggest zoom of them all. Like uh, we can take a look inside uh, a vacuum tube with this thing. <laughs> but let's zoom out. for a uh, comparison.
let's zoom out uh, just a bit. So I, uh, I've got uh, three stages of zoom now on this thing. But I've got this uh, test gear cam. That I can, uh, I can have a view on uh, what's happening on the scope and uh, the frequency meter and the generator. For a uh, demonstration purposes, see, I can even uh, change the view, have it zoomed uh, to see the bell, the scope uh, even better. This is uh, this is my VTVM and the trusty old uh, Tech Four Six Eight. So finally, I will be able to show you some waveforms. Ain't that cool? And I've got. Uh, Temporarily the Logitech uh, C930 that I can use uh, both uh, in the bench scene and uh, in, the, in um, the desk scene, then the main scene. But I would have to have it uh, turned on uh, in the bench scene in the first place. So, um, going through the C930 from the desk to, to the bench, it would require to have it uh, turn on uh, in, the, in both scenes uh, before I uh, transition be between the scenes, but this is a uh, tiny technical detail. So let's get a view from um, the C930. Yes, that is the lab. And a few things have changed in the lab. So that would be a, just a teeny tiny preview of uh, what has been uh, happening here. What changed? Uh, I got a uh, magnifying lamp. This is uh, coming in handy quite a lot. I got a uh, desoldering station. This was vital to one of my repair projects. The Poly 61 and the Casio CZ1, they are going back to the customer. And uh, I had to change uh, all the tact switches in both synthesizers. Mm. 
that uh, that's a bunch of spares. Uh, I uh, I ordered uh, uh, something like uh, hundreds uh, of uh, those uh, tax switches uh, together. So I've got uh, something around uh, fifteen leftovers. But uh, those are good quality Omron switches, uh, and I uh, I replaced um, all the all the tech switches in two synthesizers, something like one hundred, and uh, I wouldn't be able to do it uh, in uh, an uh, elegant and reliable way without the desoldering station, even though this is a uh, cheap Chinese uh, ZD915 model. None of that hack or rubbish. <laughs> Just kidding. I wish I had a uh, hack or uh, desoldering station or some other professional grade like Weller and, uh, and Metcal or JPC, uh, something like that. <laughs> but uh, this one did a nice job um, with, uh, with this repair project. And I, um, I quite like, uh, I like using it. Especially now that I learned uh, how to use it effectively. I might uh, make a video about uh, how to set it up uh, and uh, how to maintain it so that uh, it does a nice um, desoldering job. So, without further ado, see you next time, stay determined and carry on. <laughs>